So good morning, everyone. Well, afternoon. Uh, my name is Daniel Alex. And uh, before we get into things, I'd like to talk a little bit about this shape we see on our first slide. This is a stellarator magnetic field. The colors represent field strength and the lines represent field direction. Stellarators are devices designed for nuclear fusion. And this summer, me and my mentors looked at several different designs and studied their particle trajectories, their loss trajectories, in order to understand why certain designs had better performance than others. So in a fusion reaction, we have a lot of high speed, high energy ions that are produced that the stellarator field has to confine. So in an ideal situation with a uniform field, the ions will proceed around the reactor with no trouble. But when you have a reality with a twists and turns and all these complicated coils in a field like this, that's not the case. We end up having a lot of particles that are rejected and trapped. So there are actually two different types of trapped trajectories. And the first is the ripple trapped ion. So an ion that's ripple trapped is gonna stay in one corner of the reactor and quickly bounce its way out. And ripple trapped trajectories are extremely undesirable because they are lost really quickly. And the sooner you lose a particle, the more energy it's gonna have and the more damage it's gonna cause to the reactor wall. And the next type of trap trajectory is the toroidally trapped ion. So the toroidally trapped ion is going to stay in the reactor for a little longer, and it's gonna make its way around most of the reactor before reversing direction and slowly drifting upwards and outwards. So, if we take our fields that we saw on the previous slides and unravel them, we'll get a plot that looks like what we have on the left here. So these are plots of field contours with respect to toroidal and poloidal angle. The toroidal direction is the long way around the torus, while the poloidal direction is the short way. Now, if we take these plots on the left and stretch them so that the field lines are straight, we get plots like on the right. Now, this stretching of the field, you can basically think of it like basically taking our stellarator field and blowing it up like a balloon so that it actually becomes a torus. But what's important about these plots on the right is that it allows us to study a quantity called quasi-symmetry. And quasi-symmetry tells us how uniform the field is in a certain direction. Now, all the fields in this study were quasi-axisymmetric, so we're going to be looking for symmetry and uniformity in the toroidal direction. Now looking at the plot on the top here, and this top right, this is very splotchy and there are a lot of gaps in it. And it's an example of bad quasi-symmetry because this is a place where particles can get easily trapped and channeled out, as opposed to this bottom plot where everything's very uniform. And this is actually a good example of quasi-symmetry and something we'd actually want to design for. So for our project, we compared three different fields and simulated their operation for about one millisecond using 1000 alpha particles in a software called Beams 3D. This is a software specifically designed for stellarator oper operation. And we took the results from Beams 3D and ran them. And I ran them through a MATLAB code that I wrote to study their trajectories and their loss characteristics. Now, you might be looking at these plots and thinking, okay, these look pretty similar, but there are actually some subtle differences. And those subtle differences lie in rotational transform. And that means rotational transform is in an indication of how much does the field twist. And the twist across each of these fields decreases from left to right. So what we ended up finding was that each of these fields had very good confinement. Uh, the worst confinement percentage was 96.8, but the most peculiar thing that we found was while there were no ripple trapped ions in any of these simulations, maj uh, the majority of the ions in our worst two performing reactors were lost after a single bounce. So despite not having any ripple trapped trajectories, we still had a ton of quick losses, a lot of damage to the reactor wall. And it turns out what prevents this or it seems to correlate with this is rotational transform. The more rotational transform, the less performance 
And in our highest rotational transform reactor, uh, we have no ripple, we have no single trapped, single bounce losses and a very low loss fraction. So for the future, um, we need to put more emphasis on rotational transform and the optimization process. We know quasi-symmetry works. We know it does the job. We know, we know it does kind of what we want it to in that it eliminates ripple trap trajectories and gives us some decent confinement, but we know that there is a lot more room to go. Now, I'd like to thank Daniel for setting up this program, and I'd also like to thank my mentors, Dr. Matt Landerman and Landry Herimbre for helping me with this project this summer. Thank you.